This is Joe with Joe's Astrophoto.com. Today we're going to find out what's missing in Andromeda. Throughout the month of December, while I was capturing the Witch Head Nebula and Orion, the Rosette, all those targets came up later in the evening. So before I got started, while I still had dark skies, I was just taking pictures of the Andromeda galaxy. Um, it was something that came up earlier in the night that was already high in the sky and I wanted to just take advantage of those dark skies. And once I got all the data together, I got about 14 hours total. I started putting it together and I noticed that it looked a little flat. So I went ahead and did some hydrogen alpha on it about four and a half hours. And I added that in and I think it really makes a huge difference in your Andromeda picture. So today I was going to go over how to do that. So let's get started. I've already got all of our files open for the project and I've cropped the LRGB images. Um, the hydrogen image here still needs to be registered and then probably cropped again, but we're going to get into that later. So for now, I'm just going to minimize that. So the first thing that you want to do is just combine the images after cropping. Um, you could use RGB combination or LRGB combination. I just got this on the side of my screen, so I'll use it. And we're going to quickly grab these and start our image. We're also not going to use the luminance just yet either. So let's just get these where they need to go. And we'll accept the defaults. And we'll do a screen stretch. We're done with that for the moment. The next thing you do real quick is a dynamic background extraction. I've already got this open and set up so that you wouldn't have to watch me uh, delete the rest of uh, my samples. So we're just going to do a quick division. And then one more pass on subtraction. If you're interested in how I do my uh, dynamic background extraction, I do have uh, another video on when to do it. Um, or when the best time to do it is, and um, I'll put that up on the screen. Now we're going to do a quick uh, color calibration of this image. So open up um, background neutralization, and my color calibration is not here. There we are. So let's just... I let the um, Pixinsight defaults work for me as opposed to getting references. Okay, so we're going to minimize these and use. we might use them later. So here's our RGB image of Andromeda. And it looks kind of plain, but we're going to fix that. Next thing we're going to do is open up our hydrogen alpha layer. And we're going to go to star alignment under all processes. And we're going to um, register and star align and register the hydrogen alpha layer. So we've got image 52 will be our reference image.
And our target view is going to be the hydrogen alpha. Got a few of them opened. Um, and you have to make sure that's check marked. And everything else can take just be default. And that should give us a a new hydrogen alpha registered image. So we could minimize that again. And this is what we're going to add into our RGB image. And we're still in um, linear form. We haven't stretched anything yet. So I can close this. I could tell that we're going to have to crop this. So we're going to open up the um, dynamic crop. And if we crop this, we're going to have to also crop our main image and we're also going to have to crop our luminance image as well so that they all match so that we don't have to do another star alignment later so i'm going to drag this on this image and i'm going to drag this to our luminance image and then execute it on our hydrogen image and we can close this. Okay, now that we have our hydrogen image cropped, we have to go through the same thing again that we did with the other image. We're gonna have to do a dynamic background extraction. Sorry about all the things on this um, warning. Someday I'm gonna turn that off, I promise. And now we'll do a subtraction. Okay. Now that we've got that done, I'm going to quickly do another um, multi-scale linear transform on this to clean it up as well before we add it into our image. And close that and now we're ready to combine the two images together so we're going to go to scripts and utilities and find NB RGB combination we're going to use um, image 52 as our source and our hydrogen um, registered image as our narrow band at seven nanometers, which is what was used to take this. And then we'll click the NBRGB button. Oh, I say that fast three times. And it takes a second and it'll show us what our image is gonna look like. And we can say, okay. And now we have our new combined image of Andromeda with the hydrogen alpha clusters in it. All right, now we're going to go ahead and stretch this. So I'm going to open up the histogram transformation. We're going to reset the screen stretch. We'll open up the preview, lock it in. And we'll probably do two passes on this one. Oh, maybe one more pass. Actually, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I guess. That'll do it. And close this. And here's our stretched RGB image with the hydrogen alpha in it. And you could already tell it makes a huge difference. Um, it makes the galaxy pop out a little bit more. And it also makes me wonder what it would be like living in that galaxy and what kind of targets we would have 
or what it looks like looking back at our Milky Way and how many um, hydrogen alpha clusters we have that you could see like this. All right, so it's time to add our luminance data as well. So we're going to have to do the same things real quick to the luminance layer as we did to the others. So that means doing another uh, dynamic background extraction. And getting more obnoxious alarm sounds. And let's do a subtraction. And we'll do a quick multi scale linear transform for the background noise. And we'll go ahead and stretch this. Oops, got to turn the screen stretch off so we can see what we're doing. And we'll make another pass. It's pretty good, actually. That's call that good. So now it's time to combine the two images. So we'll open up the LRGB combination. We're going to remove the red, the green, and the blue. And we'll add our luminance layer and apply it to our main image. Now we're going to make a mask real fast of the galaxy using the range selection tool. And you just have to play with these sliders until you find the mask that you like. I think that looks pretty good. And close that and this. And we'll apply this mask to our image. Oops. I don't want to close the mask. Okay. And we're going to not show the mask so we can kind of see what we're doing when we go into curves. So we'll go into curves and I'll look at the preview screen. And I think the first thing I'd like to do is add a little bit more blue to the galaxy. Not a lot, but just a little bit of blue. I like my Andromeda's blue. <laughs> All right, and uh, let's apply that. Oh, let's reset this and then go to saturation. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of saturation. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then reset that. And we're gonna brighten it up just a little and then darken it on the bottom a little bit, just to give it some contrast. Just a really slight S-curve. See, something like that. So I did a little bit more work on the image. Uh, I've reduced some of the stars, and I tried to get some of the core back because it was a little washed out. I went ahead and quickly processed um, the other image, our first image, before we added the hydrogen alpha so that we could see the difference. I added the luminance. So they're both LRGB images. One has hydrogen alpha data in it, and the other one doesn't. And it's just so that you could see the, the stark contrast between the two of them. 
I hope you found this useful. If so, please leave a like and uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.